Andrew S. Paul, you are the artistic director of Kinetic Theater of Pittsburgh. That's correct. It's kind of the new kid on the block here. We got a new theater company sprouting up. That's right. As 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 one of my friends said, you know, this is really great, Andrew. You start a new theater company every six months. <laughs> is and it that, true? No, it's only the second one in a year. Okay. Well, but, still that's <laughs> that, that's up there. You know, I did start Pittsburgh Irish and Classical Theater, and that company has been in existence for 18 years. The first 17 with me. So uh, uh, so I guess I deserve a you know after 17 years uh, starting two in a year. As long as I don't start a third in a year. So you have you have planted things that have taken root and grown. So that's on your that's resume. Correct. And now we have Kinetic blossoming uh, with its uh, inaugural production, Romance, by David Mamet. Which you know, I, 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 those two, David Mamet and Romance, exactly. in the same <laughs> sentence. He's like the least romantic person. Well, right. <laughs> so what can you tell me about this play? Romance is the major plot thread, if you can call it a plot thread, but the play is basically a courtroom farce. So a courtroom farce called Romance by David Mamet. It, it just seems completely... And I think we need to mention that, you know, I am not just putting you on trial in this interview. We're on set. It's This That's is correct. like a courtroom. We're, we're actually in the stenographer's box. Oh, okay, not the like witness the witness box. The is actually box. on the other side. Well, I didn't want to tell you that. that makes sense, too, because stenographer's <laughs> taking notes. We're recording this, you know. Exactly. But no, this is great. And it's uh, at uh, the Dance Alloy Studio um, on Penn Avenue. And when I walked in here, I mean, it really felt like this was a courtroom. I'm like, oh, gee, I never knew this was here. And then I'm like, oh, it's, you know. That's their set. Now, it, it's, it's a little unusual because we're catching you as, we're, as we sit and talk here now, right in the middle of your run. Right. So, how's it going? It's going great. Yeah? It's going great. The, 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 the show is, uh, is a very wacky play. So it's not to everybody's taste because it is full. Who doesn't of, like wacky? What do you mean it's not to everybody's taste? It's very politically incorrect humor. However, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. it is humor and it is pretty hilarious. And uh, <laughs> and people find themselves laughing despite themselves at this point. Well, I mean, you look at your 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 poster. It's uh, yeah. um, yeah, a, a lawyer with a leopard print uh, briefcase satchel wearing no pants. So. Um, Pretty much says it, it all. If you're right? crying at this, it's going to be from laughter, probably. That's right. Tell me about directing Mammoth. Is is there a certain approach you got to have? It's really technical. Yeah. I mean, Mammoth is kind of like Beckett and Pinter in that he basically he, it's, he's like a musician. He scores his plays, and so you really have to pay very close attention to how he structures the mm. beats and the jokes. And the cast has to sit around, and we spend a long time kind of chewing this play over because the play is is really absolutely structured like a chamber hmm. uh, piece of music, and and each 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 one of our musicians, each one of our actors, performers, uh, has to play their role to kind of create the overall effect. And you'll kind of see this when you see a performance of the play because there are sections of it that are absolutely tightly structured that have to be played like a piece of music. Now, I have heard a rumor. Okay. Is it true that you are bi-coastal? I am bi-coastal, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a strange uh, position to be in. Oh, yeah? And uh, basically, my wife is a physician, and she, I actually met her here. Uh, she uh, did her residency and her fellowship with, uh, at, at West Penn and then at Allegheny General. I think if people are looking to meet physicians, Pittsburgh's a good, good place. place. Yeah, absolutely. She ended up getting a fantastic opportunity in the Southwest, which is a very large, uh, she's a nephrologist, a kidney specialist, and, and the largest kidney private practice in the country is split between Phoenix and Las Vegas and she's working for that firm and it's it's a it's a it's a great place to work and uh, Las Vegas is like living on Mars it's a very strange place how so <laughs> I mean, well, like, how so like Mars? I know it's strange, but I'm thinking, like, what is Mars like? Because it's just in the middle of nowhere and it's all well, desert? Yeah, or? it's all desert. You wonder, it's not really fit for human habitation. People shouldn't be living there. There's <laughs> I didn't no think water. anybody really did live there. <laughs> well, that people just came and spent money and, you know, did other so things. So did I. So what's Pittsburgh got over Vegas? Pittsburgh has arts and culture. Vegas has showbiz uh, and gambling, but they don't really have arts and culture. Hmm. Okay, and I think they're trying to develop arts and culture there, and, I, and I, maybe I can play my role in bringing some arts and culture to, to, to Las Vegas, but uh, they, they have very little professional 
uh, what I would call legit theater in Las Vegas. What they have is they have a lot of musicals, a lot of yeah, casino shows. Yeah. Cirque, Cirque du Soleil, Soleil has about nine shows going on there. Bette Midler still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Cher. You get yeah, Elton yeah. John. Uh, all right. Celine. You know, they're all yeah. there. Britney Spears has got an ongoing residency. But you know what? They've all been through Pittsburgh. <laughs> exactly. They've all been here, too. <laughs> And we've exactly. got a casino now, so, you know. You don't need Las Vegas, exactly. I get the impression you enjoy the business end of the theater. Is this true or I is do. it? I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of nerdy. I really like to study numbers and everything, and, and so I, 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 I spend a lot of time poring over lists of donors and, and ticket sales and emails and trying to figure out you know where your audience is coming from who mm. you should be marketing to why can't we get more people like that and uh you know i i find that really fascinating and i've always you know i've always uh, had an interest in in the business side of the business but luckily i'm an artist too so i can i can combine both it's a nice both balance parts. exactly so with that in mind what then is your approach to choosing future shows for kinetic well it's uh, obviously i'd like to do i mean my forte really is is actor-driven plays of ideas. And I like to do plays that have nice ensembles of roles for actors so that you can, I mean, this company is a perfect example. Romance is a cast of seven. Every role is a gem. Everybody contributes to the whole. Like I said, it's like a chamber ensemble, these seven guys, and they work beautifully together. And that's the type of work that I do well. And so, you know, I wanna keep doing uh, these sort of ensemble-based plays. The question is how big can I produce? Mm. Because uh, it took me a while to build up Pittsburgh Irish and Classical Theater so I could do huge classical plays and afford to do them. Uh, you know, they, they have this joke in, in, in the theater, the, the guys that founded this very successful theater in London, the, uh, the Almeida Theater, uh, they, re they retired after like 10 years on the job. And mm. these two guys, it was uh, Jonathan Kent and Ian McDermott. I'll never forget it because somebody asked them, they said, well, your theater is so successful, well, what are you retiring for? You guys are not, you know, old, you know, and, and uh, Jonathan Kent's response was, well, what people don't realize is even when you're successful, you're always two flops away from bankruptcy. Huh. And that's I think true. that's a really telling comment because I think that uh, that is the nature of almost every theater I know. You cannot afford to have consecutive uh, 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 plays that do extremely poorly at the box office or you yeah. are dead in the water. And so you, you're pretty much, you can afford to have one turkey and we all have our turkeys in our past but uh, you got to pretty consistently line it up and hit it out of the park and I think that's one of the problems with choosing plays and I think that's why uh, you know if you look at the the repertoire in the American theater I think it's it's become increasingly uh, uh, limited and pared down it's smaller cast it's single unit oh, yeah. set plays and that's economics and I mean yeah, exactly. people are and writing for an economics that's it and the same and and the same plays are being done again and again and again all over the country and you think okay well can't people get out of this this sort of mindset that they're in and think outside the box and put mm. some stuff on I mean you look at a play like romance and this is a play you can see why this play isn't getting a lot of air in the in the American regions because I mean Mamet is making fun of Jews he's making fun of Muslims he's making fun of conservative Christians he's I mean nobody is getting spared in this play well and at least the, he's you know <laughs> an equal opportunity insulter yeah. Ex exactly so nobody should be offended because he's offending right. everybody right but at the same time you can see why somebody who's a bean counter at one of these theaters will look at that play and go good God I'm gonna offend half my audience if I put this play on no that plays out I think we have to laugh at ourselves though yeah. I mean isn't that kind of why we go to the theater is in some way shape or form to see ourselves you know I, I completely agree and uh, you know I like to think of, of, of life as a comedy I mean Chekhov is my favorite play if we didn't we'd cry exactly and and uh, you know when 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 life gets it at its lowest point where, where you're feeling that it's the most absurd, it's when you laugh the hardest. But I love that, like, st stereotypical courtroom drama, you yeah. know, where, like, to, to kill a mockingbird, everybody's, you know, fanning themselves and they're in their big Easter hats and, you know, everybody's sweating. I'm really loving this. And in a minute, I'm going to go sit in the judge's seat because I've always wanted to hey, you know, be there, that's too. That's the place to be. He's um, got the comfy chair, too.
Wow. Which is very interesting because I think he's a lousy director. Now, I wouldn't tell him that face to face, but. Well, he better hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> he's going to show up in your jury box. He's going to put you on trial. It, now, is there a possibility of in the future taking a kinetic show from Pittsburgh and touring it? Absolutely. Over in Vegas. Absolutely. You just need to put everybody in sequins and feathers and you got it. You, 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 that's it. This is probably not what you thought the subject of this interview was going to be. But I'm interested there's, there's, nonetheless. There's, I don't, <laughs> I mean, this, is, this is my show. We'll talk about whatever I want.